2023 turned out to be a really good year. Uh, I think there are a lot of people coming into 2023 who were fearing the worst. Uh, they were incorrectly looking at an economy that uh, appeared to be uh, going into a downturn because of uh, higher interest rates uh, as a simple driver. That was always a, a dramatic oversimplification in the first part. Um, the economy was actually pretty good leaving 2022. The industry, the advertising industry, kind of talked itself into a downturn or a softening um, in many markets, including the US. Uh, so I think the sentiment was still very negative this time last year. And I don't think many would have expected the kind of growth that we ended up seeing. Uh, some of the growth was almost guaranteed because the comparables were so easy, right? The, the fact that the second half of 2022 was so soft meant that the second part of 2023 would be relatively strong because of the relatively benign economic conditions that are out there. So as it turned out, the year came out a lot better than I even thought when I produced my first forecast in this capacity. Uh, the third quarter numbers were incredibly strong. Cross-border advertising is one of the main drivers, really underappreciated how much money flows from China into the US and other countries, but it's a key contributor to the growth that we're seeing. Mm. How is 2024 shaping up? I, I guess we're going to see more streaming ad spend. It's a presidential election year. Yeah, so I think I tend to look at the ad market excluding uh, political uh, advertising just because it, it, it gets messy when you're looking year to year. Um, better when we're looking over multi-year periods of time, of course. But if we exclude political advertising, which, yes, will be healthy, probably $17 billion or so healthy, uh, if we exclude that, we probably end up with a slightly softer market, but still a strong one uh, in absolute terms. Uh, inflation is not a factor, uh, really. Inflation, it should be added, is usually a positive factor for advertising because we look at the numbers in nominal terms, not real terms. So when you have less inflation, uh, there's just less money in the market overall. So going to a 5% growth rate in 2024 on an underlying basis versus say six in 2023, and again, just in the US, um, you know, it's a good market by most standards. Now that doesn't mean it's good for everyone, of course, but it does mean that the total pools of spending are going up. Uh -huh. And what does that mean for TV in, in particular? You know, we're, we're witnessing this uh, transition from linear to, to streaming. Uh, what is that going to do anything for, for TV overall? Well, I mean, if you're anyone selling advertising, a strong market is better or, or preferable than a, a weak market. Uh, with that said, I don't expect growth on an underlying basis for uh, television in the U.S., whether at a national or local level. Uh, the reality is that, you know, the biggest factor of driving advertising is, is what I call creative destruction, the Joseph Schumpeter concept of it, not the end of J. Walter Thompson. Um, but basically, you have growth uh, in the overall economy of businesses who just have different characteristics in terms of their marketing and media needs. That tends to skew them towards digital. The incumbent marketers who've been around for 20 and 30 and 40 years, they also have different characteristics. They are shifting their spending uh, out of television, packaged goods in particular, because they need to fund their retail media somehow. Uh, that is a factor. But the biggest issue is that the biggest advertisers in the, in the overall economy are just far less predisposed towards using television. The combination of those factors leads to decline, independent of audiences, independent of measurement, independent of all the secular trends we could point to. Where is that spend going to go, if anywhere? Is, is the likes of TikTok going to be a beneficiary? Absolutely, TikTok is a beneficiary, but digital platforms more broadly. Yeah. So, I mean, Meta should continue to grow at a decent clip. Can they do double digits? Maybe. Um, Google and its various properties, sure. Can they grow high single digits? Absolutely. And the thing is, when you take, uh, then say, an Amazon, that is uh, a very, the third largest seller of advertising outside of China, if they can still grow close to 20%, Combine that, right there you get like 60% of the industry growing at combined double digits. Well, if the whole industry only grows by five, what happens here? Mm -hmm. Now to be sure, there are other growers like TikTok, Pinterest, Snap should be able to grow too. The bigger trend is just global players tend to be growing, right? And those which are focused on what we call digital platforms are growing. Uh, the problem for television is, again, their incumbent uh, advertiser base is shifting away from what they have, and the newer marketers that have emerged are predisposed towards using other kinds of media. 
In, indeed, you just come off a panel here today in which you, you, you said that the top 10 digital properties would continue to increase their share of, of ad spend, d despite some uh, disagreement in the panel. Yeah, absolutely. Concentration at a global level is one of the most important themes and still underappreciated. Uh, it's, what's more important is the availability of the data, software, uh, the fact that you can activate on a platform in the same way in the same markets around the world. I mean, it, it, it is a driver of growth. If you're a marketer in uh, Tucson, Arizona, or in Sheffield, England, how you manage advertising is basically the same. And the fact is that if you are a seller of advertising, you can optimize what your platforms look like with the kind of scale that you have to figure out the best way mm -hmm. to run your platform, including data, including activation, execution, etc. There are real economies of scale that follow from having a global footprint. And again, it's not just Google and Facebook that are doing this. Amazon clearly as well, but TikTok, so long as it's legal, is benefiting from it. Pinterest, Snap, notwithstanding what, what's happening, which uh, this year was, was separate issues, I guess. But they are all much better positioned, I would argue, than say traditional TV networks. Lastly, it's an industry that, despite all its capabilities and potential and promise, is still not without its uh, bottlenecks in, in certain areas. What is, what is the one thing that you hope changes or shifts next year? One thing, wow. The one thing that uh, I would hope change, I, I, I think that the biggest issue, any one marketer uh, can look at the world independently and probably should. What I've just explained is what I think will happen in general. Um, money will flow based on the way the industry is shaped, the way it will evolve very, very, very gradually. And I don't want to say it's easy, but it's relatively easy to predict how the industry moves. That doesn't mean it's the right way to move. Um, I think that individual marketers can make decisions for themselves. They often don't, though. They rely too much on third parties. Um, I don't think they assess everything from the marketing mix or media mix models that they use to inform their decisions and critique them sufficiently to uh, identifying the right balance between spend on creative versus media. I mean, all of our talk just now kind of assumes away the spend on creative, which is the correct way if you're trying to analyze the industry. But that's not the right choice for an individual marketer. Spend more on creative, you'll get far better outcomes. Right. For example, um, there's other media that are completely ignored, direct mail, radio, doesn't mean they're not effective. They're just inconsistently organized with the way that marketers tend to organize. And so there are great opportunities out there for marketers who just ignore everything that I'm saying about where everyone else is going. That's the zig, so you should zag. And if there's one thing to kind of hope for for any one marketer, it's just know what everyone else is doing and then do something different.